Hey guys, welcome to this video. Now this video is about a topic which a lot of people are confused about and I am talking about ESOPs. ESOPs in a startup and the full form of ESOP is, let me just write it, employee stock employee stock ownership plan and I know a lot of you are confused about how actually to use ESOPs uh, what are ESOPs how do you issue ESOPs what is the difference between ESOPs uh, uh, giving uh, stocks to an employee versus giving stocks to a co-founder a lot of things which are there in your uh, mind right so in this video after this video you will be clear about everything about ESOPs so ESOPs are extremely simple the name suggests it's employee stock ownership plan what does this mean employee means any any employee any any person who is joining your company is an employee now here employee specifically means people who are other than co-founders so people minus founders I, I would say so these are the employees so we are talking about people uh, about, about people who are in your company or team members apart from your founding team apart from the fund founders so the stock ownership that you give them is called ESOP employee stock ownership plan okay now first thing is why do we give ESOPs why are ESOPs important now sometimes when you are a company you are a new company now ESOPs are important in actually uh, two ways number one when you are a new company and you do not have you want to hire talented people but you do not have uh, enough money to provide them their market salary so in that case what you do what, what can you do is that in in uh, in case you are a growing startup you are a promising startup you can provide them with a slightly less salary that you can accommodate plus you can give them some stocks in the company in the form of esops so now what happens is that for example if someone's uh, market package is yearly package is 24 lakhs but you can only give him uh, say 12 lakhs of a yearly package so what 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 you can do is that you can give him a 12 lakhs of cash package plus you can give him say 20 lakhs worth of ESOPs so you can make a plan like this now how did ESOPs help you it helped your company to save cash because now you do not have to give 24 lakhs cash because cash is very important in a startup number two is it helped you hire talented people even when you did not have cash so that is important okay uh, so number one is this when you want to give ESOP number two is when uh, uh, the use of ESOP comes when you are a company who has money who has a lot of money but you want people to stay with you 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 hire talented people for example you are a big company now paytm is a big company you see that uh, in uh, news every other day you see that uh, there are news like paytm senior uh, vice president quit paytm coo just quit paytm's chief technology officer quit or oyo rooms uh, this person senior management quit so what happens is that a company puts a lot of efforts in hiring good people and hiring senior management and if they leave uh, suddenly then what happens is that company is jeopardized uh, a lot of you the company is in trouble because now it has to f quickly find new people good people at senior level which is difficult to find second is they'll have to train those people and go through that process again so it's a cost time energy everything uh, for the company is getting wasted so what they do is that even if they have money and say if there is a senior person who is coming at an yearly package of 5 crores right so what the company does is that instead of providing this 5 crores as a cash package uh, you uh, the, uh, the company what they can do is they can provide 4 crores as the cash package plus they can provide another 4 crores as ESOPs and so now what happens is that this senior employee he has got a good decent enough salary package also cash package plus he has got company shares worth 4 crores and if company is company's value is increasing these shares are going to increase they might tomorrow become 6 crore they might tomorrow become 7 crore so this person will now be more interested in company's progress because as companies progress he will have his value is going to increase right now uh, how is ESOP important in retaining right now I told that persons leave, person leaving a company a senior management suddenly uh, uh, leaving the company is uh, resigning from a position is a uh, difficult task for a company 
so usually when esops are given uh, they are given with something which is called a vesting period now what this what does this vesting period means uh, now say for example a vesting period for this esop is 3 years which means that only after 3 years can these stocks be taken by that senior these has been assigned to him but he can only exercise and take them after 3 years what does that mean that mean that say for example after 3 years uh, this 4 crores become 8 crores so if he has to take this 8 crores it means that he has to be with this company for at least 3 years because if he leaves before 2 years he will get no part of this this part will be not given to him if he leaves before 3 years if he leaves in less than 3 years this part this this amount of share uh, sh uh, shares will not be given to him it's a loss for him a big loss 4 crores is a big loss for him so to retain employees what companies do is they assign them esops they give them a vesting period uh, usually the vesting period is 3 years or it can be 2 years also or sometimes it is like in first year you can uh, in the first year you can take uh, uh, 20 percent of your shares in the second year you can take another uh, 50 percent of your shares or in third year you can take another 30 percent of your shares something like this right it can be something no, not 50 here it's usually 30 here and 50 here yeah so in first year you can take 20 percent of the share so for example if i have if this person has joined the company and he has been allotted four crores and he wants to leave the company after one year he can take 10 20 percent of this four crores or whatever the value it is after uh, one year so say after one year the value is five crores and he wants to take 20 percent if he is leaving after five years he can take 20 percent of five crores which is how much one crore right so he can take this 1 crore and leave but the remaining 4 crores goes back to the company again. So the importance of ESOP is very critical number one is it helps you retain employees for a longer period so that they do not resign and you will have to look for a new person you usually do that with talented people if someone is very talented and you want to keep them for a longer time you give them very high ESOPs and give them a vesting period. Number two is it helps the employees to have an ownership of the company. So when you give an ESOP to any employee, be it this employee a senior person or this I'll write a fresher. Okay. This is a fresher, this was a senior. Even if a fresher is given ESOPs, now since he has been given a sort of ownership, shares of the company means if you would have watched my video on company structure, you will see that company is nothing but shares, equity shares. And if you give him shares, uh, or stocks is the same thing uh, this means that this person now owns a certain part of the company and as the company grows his value will also grow so if tomorrow your company grows double the size his 20 lakhs will become 40 lakhs if it grows five times his 20 lakhs will become one crore so now he will be much more interested in the progress of the company compared to when he is not giving any given any ESOP. so that is how ESOPs help you uh, when you do not have cash it helps you save cash and hire talented people when you have cash it helps you to retain talented people uh, it also helps you uh, in people becoming more immersed in the progress of your company right now how are esops typically assigned and how is it different from co-founder so this is usually the cases of uh, other cases of companies which have grown to a certain extent you i understand are a are an entrepreneur a young entrepreneur who have still not formed his company right so how do you allot shares and how is it different from uh, mm, say uh, co-founder shares now this is say for example your entire company with 100% equity now you and your co-founder for example you own initially you are the only co-founder and you own 100% of the company okay then you are finding another co-founder he comes in and you give him 25% of the company so now you own 75% and this co-founder owns this is co-founder 1 c1 this is co-founder 2 25 percent okay now what happens is your company is formed and you have started hiring people now what you can do is that 
uh, what typically happens when ESOPs are assigned is that uh, as your company grows to initially what happens when, when someone is joining in, when a talented employee is joining in, you usually give him shares, these shares only, right? Uh, the normal shares of the company. So, for example, if a new uh, Android developer is coming and he wants a higher salary, you cannot give him. So, you tell him, yeah, you take another, you take 10% equity, but uh, come at a lower salary. So, then what happens is based on whatever, uh, whoever is giving, say for example, only co-founder one is given, giving the equity, then it will become 65%. So, he will have 65%, 10%, 25%. This is uh, employee one. Okay, so this is usually what happens in early stage startups. So you see, all these three are no different. Co-founder 1's equity, uh, co-founder 1 shares, co-founder 2 shares and employee shares are all the same right now. Right, there is no separate, you call him employee, but he has the same shares as this person has. The amount is, the amount of shares are different. He has 25%, he has 10%, but the type and quality of shares are the same, right? So, as your company grows big, as you start hiring more people, Usually your structure looks like this, that uh, say 25% uh, of your company is held by investors and say the rest 75% is held by co-founders, by founders, let me write founders, okay. Now a company has different types of shares, okay. A company has shares like... Uh, uh, say, I, I'll just tell you two types of shares. Type 1 of shares are uh, preferential shares. Type 2 are, I'll say, let me just say ESOPs. Now, what happens is that certain company decisions require agreement of all shareholders. For example, if you want to make a certain deal with an investor, all these shareholders, all the shareholders in the company have to sign on the paper and they'll have to agree. If someone does not sign, that deal cannot go through. Okay. Now, this looks very simple, but what happens is that this can have, for example, this company has four founders and this 25% is hold, held by 10 investors. Each investor has 2.5%. So now there are 14 people who have to sign a deal. Plus, if you give this equity to employee, for example, if you have giving, given this equity to five employees because they, you, you wanted to give them ESOPs. So now a total of 14 plus 5, 19 people have to agree to sign the agreement plus employees do not uh, usually engage in the management. So if some employee does not agree then you will be in trouble. So what happens is that to solve that problem uh, you differentiate the types of shares in your company. You tell that my normal shares which, which are held by founders and investors are preferential shares which means that preferential means these shares are give, given preference. That's, that's the simple meaning. So anyone you give preference to, which means that only these shares, only, in, only shareholders who have these type one shares will be able to, will be allowed to sign and uh, agree to any deal which has been made. Type two are ESOPs. The value of these can be same. The value can be same, but the duties and rights of these are different, right? So, uh, if you, so now you have decided two types of shares. The value might be same. Say for example, each share has a value of rupees 100. So both of them will have same value. But since the problem was that you do not want a lot of people to come into management, especially the employees. So you form a separate pool called ESOP. So for example, you form this 10% ESOP pool. This is called ESOP pool. Now, what does this mean is that you have not given it to anyone yet, but you have formed it. 10% ESOP pool means any employee who comes tomorrow, he will be allotted equity from this 10% shares. Because these 10% shares are different. These are T2 shares and these are T1 shares. So these shares have voting rights, means any decision which is being taken, these then when the people who hold these shares, they can uh, decide whether the decision should be taken or not. While these shares are only to provide value to the person, to provide monetary value to the person. They do not want that person to be engaged in the management activities. So you form a separate ESOP pool, a 10% ESOP pool and any employees who comes, for example, if an employee comes and he wants a certain amount of shares, you want to give him shares worth 20 lakhs in the company, you give him shares from this. If any employee comes, all the employees will be fitted into this. So tomorrow what happens is if all these shares are exhausted and you want more ESOPs, you create another 10% ESOP pool and then you start allotting from this, right? 
so i hope now you have understood how it happens i'll just revise it once again uh, so in a usual startup what you can do is it is pretty evident that you provide equal amount of shares to people equal quality types of shares to everyone be it a co-founder or an employee you can call someone a co-founder you can call someone an employee but they have the same quality of shares so tomorrow if there is a deal that is happening all shareholders have to sign so this employee will also have to agree to that but usually you do not want employees to get into the management especially if the number of employees are increasing so in that case what you do is you divide the share into two types preferential shares and esops preferential both have equal value in terms of monet in, in terms of monetary value but these are voting rights these is not have decision uh, what i would say these would have these have decision making rights these do not have decision making rights so i create a separate 10% esop pool something which is called i have I, I create an ESOP pool from this. I create a 10% ESOP pool. I and whoever uh, any employee who comes and I want to give him ESOPs instead of a higher salary, I can just allot shares from this part. Uh, so now he has shares, he has monetary value, but he does not have decision making rights. So any decision which has to be taken will only be taken by these people, only investors and founders. Employees will be kept out of any management decision which has been taken. That's the uh, funda of how ESOPs are given. And uh, I have already told you about the importance of ESOP. Uh, I have told you about the vesting period also. So in case you are also giving ESOPs employees, even if you are giving ESOPs to a, a person in this manner, you, are, you just have one type of shares which is usually the case and you are giving it to an employee, it's okay to give, but always have a vesting period of at least three to two years, which means that only if this person remains for two years, will he have this part of the company. Otherwise, what might happen is that in case this person leaves in just six months, he will take away 10% of the company. So even if he is not working for the company and you are working hard, he has 10% of the company and now you'll have to buy it from him, right? He has not done any work, still he, he, he took it. So that's why it's very important that you keep a vesting period. You can give uh, pref you can give uh, uh, a divided plan that how 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 is an equity release? How are the ESOPs released? In the first year, it can be twenty percent. Second year, thirty percent. And the third year, the rest fifty percent. Okay. So this is how uh, you work with ESOPs. Let me just uh, see if there are any other. So okay, I have now told you about ESOPs. Let me just. Uh, tell you now about the uh, disadvantages of an ESOP. Okay, I have told you about the advantages. Now the disadvantages for the company are that if you give the ESOP to the wrong person, it become it can become slightly messy, right? If you give an ESOP to the wrong person, he's not performing, which means that your company's ownership has been given to someone who is not up to the mark, which is a bad thing. Plus, if you are creating ESOP, it requires a higher degree of uh, legal and uh, regulatory wise, uh, higher degree of control. So your costs might increase slightly, but uh, your, your time and energy will increase definitely because you will have to uh, take care of this in a legal and in a regulatory uh, way. So for a company, it has to be very careful while allotting ESOP and make sure that it is allotted to the right person. Now, how can it be? Uh, uh, how can it be a bad thing for a person, for an employee? We we have seen only good things. If you get ownership of the company, it is good, right? So if, if I wanted 12, 24 lakhs of salaries and if he's giving me 12 lakh plus he has now given me 20 lakhs of ESA. So my effective salary is what 20 plus 12 means 32 and, it, and this can even grow to 1 crore. But guys, what happens if tomorrow this company shuts down, which means that this will go to zero. So instead of 24 lakhs, you've just got 12 lakhs, half of it. And what happens if this goes down tomorrow, if your company does not perform, it goes 20 lakhs to 10 lakhs. You still get only 22 lakhs. After one year, you would have gotten 24 lakhs, you still. So there is a risk for the employees also. So when you as an employee are taking uh, ESOPs, make sure that uh, the company is on a growth trajectory or the company has scope to grow. Uh, because ESOPs only... Uh, matter when the company is good and it has growth potential. Otherwise, this actually uh, ESOP does not matter. Your uh, eventually, if the company shuts down, this money is gone, is vanished away. Even if the company decreases in value, if, uh, declines, then also this money is gone. So, 
Uh, I think now you have understood clearly how, what are the advantages of ESOP. There are definitely advantages, but anything which has advantages has disadvantages also. And it, has, it is up to you whether you are an entrepreneur who wants to give ESOP or whether you are an employee who wants to take ESOP uh, and join a startup or a company. Uh, you will have to make sure that it is done in a right way because you are here playing with your owner com ownership of the company. right? And this is an extremely critical aspect of the company, company shares. So make sure that you do it in a smart way and think of future. I see a lot of entrepreneurs that in the, in the excitement of the moment of starting their company, they distribute equity freely to their employees or everyone, which is wrong. It becomes a mess later on. So try and give uh, salary cash as much as possible. Try saving this equity, try saving these shares uh, because these might come useful later on. Okay, so I hope that you guys have now understood in detail what ESOPs are, what employee stock options, ownership plans are and this is also called employee stock options. Uh, so in case some uh, this word might come up to you and uh, yeah, I think I have covered everything. Just let me just think for 5 seconds more if I have left something. I have told you how ESOPs work for a senior and a fresher. I have told you the advantages that they have, the company has, a company can save cash. I have told you the what vesting period is. I have told you that vesting period can be split. I have told you how ESOPs are created for a matured company plus a fresh starter. I have told you everything. I have told you about the type of shares that can be. Yeah, so I think I have covered everything in this video uh, and I uh, will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.